from Bahrain, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Public Sector Bahrain. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Welcome back everyone, it's theCUBE coverage. We are here for Amazon Web Services Summit in Bahrain in the Middle East, where cloud computing is changing the game for startups, businesses, and the government and society. Amazon announcing their new regions up and running. We've got two great guests to talk about all the integration and opportunities. We have Hussein with, this who's the CEO of Acme, and we have Cherian Abram, who's the uh, general manager of Computer World. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Thank you, John, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> thank you, John. It's, it's a, a great day, it's a bigger venue than last year. It's our second time here, but what's striking from this event is the explosion of innovation, not just startups. You're seeing the businesses, large global ISVs are here, You're seeing new ISVs, new software environments, and this, the demand for cloud computing is, is off the charts. So there's a real need, thirst, for cloud computing. Absolutely. What's your assessment? I, I believe that most customers have started to look into digital transformation, and customers have started to buying into a new experience of moving from on-prem into cloud. And I think that's, that's a great story because customers are looking to move from CapEx to OpEx and driving innovation and driving more for their businesses. And the cloud-first message here in Bahrain has been mandated from the top. Absolutely. And that's been forced all the ministries to do it. Yes. That's changing the citizen relationship with the society, which includes entrepreneurs and business. And now they've got to integrate it in. The banking system's behind it. Marital. So good business for you guys. What's, what's the business impact? Good business, impact? very promising business. I think uh, we are on the right track with uh, cloud business, with AWS in particular. Uh, just to add to what uh, AB has mentioned, you know, I think it's the entire ecosystem which is working well for the whole cloud objective. Um, I was just with one of the gentlemen, you know, who was uh, from one of the universities. He's teaching there, and what he mentioned to me, you know, that uh, uh, we have been giving students, good students, to you, you know, who were like on the verge of getting certified. Now we are going to make them certified and hand them over to you. So we'll have ready-made people available to us. I think uh, the policies, right from the cloud-first policy, you know, the banking policies, you know, as well as the awareness that AWS has got to the market. Uh, it's been a game changer all of a sudden. And it's causing a, well you got pipelining for talent. That's going to allow people to participate. Yep. Yes. Has there been a business driver behind all this? What's been the big business benefit besides the mandates? Have you seen from customers? Is it software development? What's the driver? What's the business driver? The key driver has been, you know, every entity would like to have an edge in the business. You know, it's no more of the old days where you have the set, you know, competitors. You all of a sudden see new faces, new companies who become big challengers. I think the very need to face this challenge as well as the desire to grow more and do more, which is driving the whole cloud momentum. You know, one of the things is agility. We've heard um, that message here. And we go to all the other cloud events. Agility, 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 data, 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 compute, storage, networking. Less about storage, network, because that's become elastic, it's available, that's what Amazon brings to the table. True. Data and agility now drive a lot of the business conversation, because now they got to go hire software developers. We need to build on top of something, that's going to be Amazon or something else. This is a big part of the business architecture. <laughs> True. What are some of the things that you guys have done? Can you talk in generalities or so some we've of the projects? At, we have looked at the elasticity of the platform. We looked at the scalability of the platform, what it brings to end customers, and how do we build innovation, bringing in new technology that helps customers take insight from their existing data and build on to it. What are some of the challenges that you guys have seen that, have, that are now available to be overcome? What, that weren't maybe a few years ago. I think the 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 overall resistance to adapting to cloud. Uh, I think that was one of the major challenges that we've seen a couple of years back because people felt that going to cloud is going to hinder the way they do their job, the work. Uh, in, in, in addition to that, the cloud brought in a lot of security related issues where people were not aware, but today people are embracing it. Customers have started to embrace technology because they see value in cloud than on-premise. On the, the culture fear of change, yes, and then the security are being addressed. 
the banks are going yes. cloud. Yep. That's a good tell sign. Absolutely. And there are a lot of ISPs <laughs> that brings in resilient solutions that addresses customer requirements. What's the number one conversation you have with customers? Security. Um, how do we build further on the cloud? How do we take core applications into cloud and take it into modernizing them? How do we take our digital transformation strategy moving forward? Your conversations? I think we talk about longevity in terms of you know, how the businesses can move forward and stay in the game for a longer time. Um, that's how the discussion starts. Okay, then we start talking about you know, what it needs to modernize the application so that you, know, you have the agility to address newer opportunities, you know, to have the growth that you always wanted to have. And of course, you know, uh, the awareness and education that has happened in this country in particular in the recent times, that has helped us a lot. Okay, we are no more talking about you know the challenges you know with security whether it's going to be secure in cloud or not. We are talking about how the business is going to behave once they make the move. I got to put you guys both on the spot with a question. I'd like you both to answer it because I think any commerce you go to, there's always the hallway conversations that are interesting because what happens in the hallways? You see someone you know. You mentioned before we came on camera. You see people here. Everyone knows each other. It's growing. What are some of the hallway conversations that you guys have had here? Um, that you could share with folks watching? We need to adopt to cloud. We need to build our strategy on cloud. We need to look at innovations. Uh, if it is government, it's about you know, more services that they can offer. It's a uh, non-government sector, the new revenue streams that they can generate. These are the conversations that I have most of the time. Get business deals done, come on, come on. Yep. Get the, you got some deals happening. Yes, <laughs> we're getting a lot of good uh, traction, but people showing a lot of interest yeah. in new areas of business. There's a, I've found there's three types of companies in digital transformation. Ones that know they got to do it, people that are doing it and might get stuck a little bit, and the folks that are done it and like, wow, maybe I can do it over again, Two. or are successful. So three kind of phases. How would you categorize the market here in terms of progress? more phase one, two, or three? What do you guys see the distribution? I think it's phase one and two. We haven't reached phase three yet. There, there are some customers who have started looking at phase three, but it's all centered around phase one, phase two. Understand the playbook? Yes. Yep. What systems are to start with? Absolutely. Those kinds of things. Yes. Fixing the culture, making more buy into Absolutely. It. Okay, the other question I want to get your thoughts on, I think it's important that we're reporting here is that cultural shift, this new generation of workers. We alluded to it about the young people coming to the university. There's a generational shift happening. Absolutely. It's almost pride. You see the sparkle in the entrepreneur's eyes. They're like, there's a whole nother thinking out there. True. How do you guys relate to that? What's your observations, being that we're the older, mature generation, <laughs> kind of looking back at the young guns coming up? I think it worked very well for us. You know, wherein we went for a combined strategy, you know. We come from a, a strong lineage of system integration and application delivery, and we had a lot of people who were very much tuned to offering turnkey solutions. So I worked first on them, okay, because I wanted to have those mindsets with huge amount of experience ready, you know, in the new era of doing business. At the same time, we started getting the new team, you know, from whom we started learning. You know, many things in cloud, many things in terms of, you know, automation, you know, we are learning more from them. So this way, I think, you know, we had the initial success. I think it will continue in our strategy. You bring in, combine them on teams. Yep. They can learn from each Absolutely. other. The key is learning two True. ways. Absolutely. I think the younger generation does not carry baggages, <laughs> unlike the older generation. Yeah. They're more open. They're, they're more agile to learning new technology, and they want to be entrepreneurs develop new yeah. applications that create opportunity for the community, for businesses, and for themselves. Yeah, I mean, we had a startup on here, 13-year-old company doing APIs, True. billions of transactions, API calls. Yeah. That wasn't even possible in the old days. Remember, Absolutely. we had a security perimeter, you know, <laughs> firewalls, everything's locked down. Now anymore, it's, it's all open. Anymore. The surface area is completely... Uh, entirely new dimension. Yeah, security is huge. Thanks so much, guys, for coming on theCUBE. Take a, a quick minute, each of you, to uh, give a plug for your companies, what you guys are working on, key initiatives okay. you'd like to share. We'll start well over here. Thank you, John. Um, my company, Computer World, focuses on digital transformation. We help businesses thrive on new areas by building innovations. 
My company, Almoeth Computers Middle East, we are a four decade old company and we have taken our rebirth recently in the cloud era, focusing more on cloud now. Whatever we do, it's all focused on cloud and we are on to managed services, we are on to the emerging technologies, RPA, AI, machine learning. Yeah, the, the, the bots are coming, this is going to help humans. True. There's the big debate about automating jobs away, kind of like, oh, I always laugh at that because there's so many op job openings. Very true. <laughs> it's like, Very true. It's not like Very some true. go away, but more are born. This yep. is the dynamic. Yep. Guys, thanks so much for coming on and sharing your insights. Appreciate it. CUBE coverage here at Bob Rain for AWS Summit. I'm John Furrier. We'll be back with more CUBE coverage after this short break.